Well, welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with my new friend, Gaz. Hey, yeah. I was, I was sitting there thinking, I got stuck by the hair, man. You got the best hair I've ever seen. <laughs> I've let it grow out, man. It's, um, I don't know, it's got like a good like inch or two inch of, uh, of roots on there. But um, at one point, there's a, there's a photo of me around on Instagram somewhere, a professional photographer uh kind of like nabbed me and i had red eyebrows and a red mustache and soul patch beard and 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 everything it was um it was a, a mohican i just got really really bored of like nothing out every beats morning. professional photography on the aspect of i got my i guess face like photograph for my senior year you know with the whole like hand on the chin i was wearing a, <laughs> i look at it i'm like i was wearing a tux it looked good it wasn't a tux it was a fucking clip on it was like a clip on <laughs> shirt with a bow tie and then a little uh whatever the uh, blazer you put on top but i was looking at it, i was like i look damn near handsome and then it's like <laughs> is everyone on instagram trying to be a professional photographer besides taking pictures of their food but taking like selfies i'm like because a lot of times the professional photography makes it look like they're fucking Brad Pitt. And then you see them and you're like, you're not Brad Pitt. You're like the dollar store Brad Pitt, where it's like, I didn't get <laughs> exactly what I ordered here. Yeah, we've got a similar one, or at least I've got a similar one, which is um, uh, we've got Lidl, which is a, a European store, which has been over here for a couple of years now, and uh, or Poundland. The, where everything's one pound. So yeah, it's the same kind of thing. It's like, oh, that's the Poundland version. Ooh. Careful with where you say Poundland in the States. That means a whole nother thing. It's actually a lot more fun. I can show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The pennies dropped. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like we have another version here. When I said Brad Pitt, I was like, there's a there's a there's a British version of Brad Pitt, like an England version. I was about to like, my mind was, I'm about to start Googling, bro. Yeah, Bradley Pittage. <laughs> He's like more elegant, always wears a suit, doesn't look like a bum. Like perfect. Like, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, that man is everywhere. I'm seeing him in commercials where it's like, you ever want to drive a Kia? All right, all right, all right. I'm like, well, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. When did you start doing car commercials? He's um he's a weird one. I I like um go back to the nineties and I was like, uh, oh it's him. You know, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, no. If he's in it, I'm not watching it, I'm not interested. But him with a load of other guys, um, I think of they've like they got so far on their looks and they're like, Man, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like relying on my looks, like that's all anyone thinks of on, on a six pack and that's it. And he's he's gone on, he's done some amazing things. Like I'm a huge fan now. I've gone from hating him to absolutely loving him. Have you seen where people are like, sometimes a person's dog matches their face. Like they look like their dog. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> to me looks like an ostrich. Like when I see him, I'm just like, skinny <laughs> eyes. I'm like, yo, that's an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> I've met an ostrich. Um, and uh, I, I wish I could say his name was Matthew. But no, he was an aggressive bastard, man. Have you ever met, have you ever met an ostrich? Or I've an seen him at the zoo, but I've never been like up close and personal. Yeah, I've um, yeah, oh, I don't know where I was. I was south, I was South America somewhere. Damn, this is the trouble with alcohol and age. And like, you know, your memories all start That's fading into combo. one. <laughs> you just, you <laughs> start losing your brain, you just say you're hammered, and then it all works out. I've got this bag, I've got this bag of feed. And they're like, yeah, yeah, go, go, go feed, go feed. I swear, he almost had my fingers off. Like uh, emus and ostrich, just lethal, lethal bastards. I can they, relate when, that whenever, with... when, when anyone says, oh, yeah, yeah, they're lovely. They're lovely creatures. I mean, liar. first of all, Australia had a war with emus. I'm just going to toss that one out there where they literally had a full on war. Like emus are arming up here, I would say, with AK-47s attached to their friggin' heads. No, but um, if you look at like I can relate that to maybe me with a carrot and a horse. I went to feed a horse a carrot one time. Dude, the thing like straight up teeth inhaled the whole carrot and then bit my fingers. And I was like, never going to touch a horse ever again. I don't know why people ride these things. Every time I hear it's like somebody fell off of one. I'm like, I don't want to turn into Christopher Reeves where I'm like in a wheelchair with a whistle for the rest of my life. That's terrible. Now, I, it's, um, you tell you what, you get this weird thing over here. It's, 
if you've got a horse over here, or at least in the south of England, you're, you're one of two things. You're either from money, and, um, and everyone's like, well, of course I've got a horse. Of course I've got a horse. Um, or the other one is you're a traveler. Um, you're, you know, you're a gypsy. And um, it's, you know, we are in Southampton, which is, you know, um, you know where the Titanic set, fell, set sail from? That's where the Titanic set sail from? Yep, Southampton. So that's where I'm from. Um, you know, people in Southampton are just so used to watching travelers um, running yeah, I around. I never return. I go and just never return. I have to picture <laughs> if you're known for where the Titanic set sail or set off from, you're like, okay, this is the place where we send people out on voyages and they never come back. <laughs> that was just once. It was only one. And it was a what now young me would have said, and it was only Leonardo DiCaprio, but now he's another one. Leonardo DiCaprio is now like, you know, fantastic. he reminds me of a koala. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's his face. It's like you want to hug him, but they look terrible soaking wet. Like when they're wet, they look like the devil spawn. No, he's 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 he's, he's <laughs> His eyes are too small. I feel like he's going to bite my fingers off. I think he, that's what he's thinking when he's in his eyes I like that. I think he's like, if like, he just gets another inch closer to my face. That used to be a sign of like when you're looking for somebody's house, you had to turn the radio down and start squinting like you need to find their house. Now it's like every actor in Hollywood, that's like the Zoolander look where it's like you have to squint the <laughs> eyes and give like this ominous, I don't know where the hell I'm at routine. I'm like, it does work though. Cause I feel like when I was getting my ID taken when like a couple of years ago for my driver's license, I did like a, like a Zoolander like face and the woman's like, I can't use that one. I'm like, so what do you want me to do? Like can I do number one, like Ricky Bobby? She's like, no, 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 no. You have to do a straight face. I was like, but every time I've seen somebody's ID, they're really pissed off in their photo. And like, that's just their face. You're supposed to have a blank expression. I'm like, so can I do a funny one? So my mind is me smiling like, hi. Like I look like a straight up version of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I said, oh, what was the other one as well? Um, super bad, McLovin. McLovin. He, he goes, you could have went with McLovin or Muhammad. And he goes, you didn't go Muhammad? He goes, no, McLovin was another common name. Who has the, who has the name McLovin? Um, that, I've known three different McLovins. Are you all, serious? All just based on that film. I can name a couple Micks, like McMuffin, McFish, McRib. <laughs> But I can't name you a McLovin, dude. That is an awesome. I would name my kid that, like McLovin. Yeah, no, that's what that's what everyone's done. I've, there's this one guy who I met through a friend of a friend, and we're at a party, and he says his name's McLovin. And I was like, no, seriously, what's your name? He's like, McLovin, that's what everyone calls me. My friends call me that so much because I remind them of, what's the actor? Oh, I can't remember the actor's name. Um, that, that plays McLovin. But he, he looked just like him with okay. the, the glasses and the fringe. I'm going to send you a photo when we get done with this. And it's that actor. Yeah. And then a person I used to work with was basically that guy. Like I have a video and <laughs> for the three years I worked at this hotel, we would, I worked at a hotel with this guy. We would find like leftover McDonald's trash in rooms. And a lot of them were McMuffins from breakfast. So I would be like, I got a sausage McMuffin for McLovin. And I would go up and hand it to him on video. <laughs> I will send you these, dude. I have a compilation on my phone of just all these things. And he looked exactly like the guy, but he had red hair and it was like really long and flowy. Eventually he dyed it blonde. But I was like, yo, you know who you look like? He's like McLovin. I'm like, yes. He goes, dude, I get it all the time. It gets me free drinks at bars. I'm like, that is fucking perfect. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's better than my story. That's it. That's, that's just shot mine down. That's it. Mine's in flames. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Do you want to talk about your show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it's it's one of these things. Though, like everyone's got a podcast nowadays. But um, my UPS guy had one. Oh, there you go. You see, there you go. Um, I don't think they're as popular in the UK. Um, I certainly don't know anyone around here with one. But it's something that I think has been knocking around inside of my brain like the last 20 years or something um and it's just like it's one of those things it's like it's not i've not have had I've not had access to it at all um and then all of a sudden it's just i've like stumbled onto it which is how i do anything i never actually 
when I go looking for it, I can't find anything. But if I, if I like, you know, if I'm doing something else, I'll stumble, you know, I'll trip over it and break my ankle and there it is. And um, that's pretty much what I did with podcasting. Um, always wanted to do some radio stuff. Never really happened. But here it is. And it's, it's um, yeah, it's the Insanely Dangerous Retro Pod Show, uh, which I think I came up with in about 30 seconds. Um, and I was like, I'll, I'll think of something better later on. And it's, it's stuck. But it's, uh, it's an 80s and 90s uh, appreciation podcast, if you like. Anything um, and from it's the 80s basically, and 90s. Hmm? Anything from the 80s and 90s or just movies? Anything from the 80s and 90s. Uh, you know, we've talked to, you know, we talk a little bit about movies, about TV. Um, I mean, we had like um, a Battle of the Bands situation. Um, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Oasis, um, but they oh, had a, a head to head. There you go. In 1995, they had a head to head with a, a, another band who I actually preferred called Blur. Um, and uh, and it went down to the wire. And we're like, you know, who, Oasis fans are going like, well, clearly it's going to be Oasis. But Blur fans are going like, no, 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 no. Blur are the better band. Oasis are more famous, but Blur are better. And this is why. And it's just it's all, it's all this stuff that's rattling around in my head. I'm like, OK, well, what can I do with this? What can I do with all these memories? What can I do with all my what can I do with all my anger and all my strong and you know, opinions that people don't <laughs> don't tend to like. Well, that oh, I know. era was just so much easier to live in. I feel like because, like yes. nowadays, it's just it's it's really really complicated. Like I always talk about, like parents from the eighties or nineties are trying to give their kids kind of instill them their mistakes, make sure their kids don't make their their mistakes. And I was like, mm. my parents, like when they were my age, they grew up in like the eighties. So I was like, I'm not gonna fucking bleach my hair blonde. I'm not going to do any of that like you did back in the day where I remember as a kid standing in the bathroom and just watching as one of my parents just sprayed their hair with hairspray for like a good five minutes to where the can was gone. (laughs) And I was like, how are like this? This was our generation's vaping was you doing this because you're causing yourself <laughs> to get sticky lung with the hairspray it's you're inhaling that it does I, I, even if i walk into like a, a pebbles or whatever that store is in the mall like a kmart or a jay's jewelry right. if i smell hairspray i get thrown back to all the times as a kid i would just smell it where it was like <laughs> i'd go to school like stoned like, like, why do you smell like fucking Paul Mitchell over here? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how it gets on my hands. But the music to me, it really never, I never truly understood how it shaped and changed to what it is now until I went to a concert where I went to go see G Love and Special Sauce, which is like an old school kind of blues band. It's still kind of right. newish. Cool. But like 2000s but like they played an old school style of music like back in the day like not kiss style stuff but more like a johnny be good type vibe then i went to go see steve aoki and i was fucking just out of place like every kid is in the back with their fingerless gloves and they're doing this like rotating ball in the dark and people are throwing cake at each other and i'm like up in the bleachers like did i enter a dimension where people are on drugs am i a burning man and then like (laughs) i felt so much more comfortable at the music styles i obviously listened to but even rock and roll shows i mean i grew up my dad was in a kiss tribute band so everything was fucking kiss so like i I was i mean both my parents were djs so i know the all the old school shit metallica all this stuff and i asked like kids my age like hey what do you think of this song like i don't know but like the new post malone the new like uh what's his name chance the rapper i'm like i don't know any of that stuff i i Mm. I like some of the stuff like maybe one song or something but i'm not big into like the new techno pop era i like the old school classics i like to be able to get in my car play avenge sevenfold when i'm feeling it you know like um that music to me seemed less studio which i think it puts more emotion into it yeah well this uh, this is a um uh uh, an issue i've got um so it's a subject that's got massive issues on. Uh, you can even start it. We we enjoyed the music in the 90s and it was great music. But even, I think even back then, it was starting to change back then with some of the bigger bands. Now, in the going back to the Oasis versus Blur episode that we did, I said that Blur were, they weren't as big, but because they were better, 
I know that doesn't make sense, but if you think about it, like Blur will go and change with each album. If you want, if you want a band to blow you away with how different they can be uh, with different styles, but still ultimately still have that that Blur sound, you go with them. If you want uh, a band who you love to make the same album five, six, seven times over, you, you're you're an Oasis fan, and that's not a, that's not a criticism. That's that's just how it is. But I think that's when music started becoming very samey, and it was the, it was the big big selling bands that were sat that had that same sound every single time, and all of a sudden they, they real. I think people in the record industry they started to realise it's like why bother? What why bother with bands that you know you could have like a great album then a poor album then a great album then a poor album why don't we just go with these great bands that have the same sound all the time never ever changing more uniform and and like i've said before on the, on the show about how there'd be like eight to ten different genres in the charts at one time back in the like, see like early to mid 90s and that was amazing because i lean towards heavier music um i'm actually a punk fan um, but um, I, I love different kinds of genres and to have loads of different genres in the charts in one time, that's fantastic. But nowadays you'll have like two or three and even worse than that, they'll all do, they'll all uh, collaborate with one another. And so th those three sounds then become one and a half sounds. Um, if if you, you see where I'm coming from. So it's I like, do. Well, I it's think just... the connection, though, is that's what's lost, which is why we can't connect with it, is because the process of making it has turned way more studio. It's like music yeah. nowadays is just made to get the most downloads or get on the charts for like maybe a month or so. It's not meant to last. Yeah. Like if you look at music back in the day, that shit was meant to last. When you saw Rob Van Winkle dance his ass off to Ice Ice Baby, you fucking like you saw him put his heart into that shit. You realize, holy crap, this was like the generation DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Kiss, Avenged Sevenfold, Metallica, even Green Day, if you want to toss them in there with the 2000s a little bit. But like they still had that music that was like there was it was the band putting their heart into that shit. Red Hot Chili Peppers, why a lot of people love them is because the vibe that they create, it can drag you in. Also drugs. Um a lot of people are experiencing with drugs it makes you connect to music a little bit easier because i feel like it breaks down the wall that is between your mind and the music um it's an issue with i think like you hear the processes nowadays i was listening to an interview with um steven tyler from aerosmith and he was talking about how he created the song um was it not dream on a sweet emotion i think and it was they were playing a concert and the gig ended up having to get closed out because of the fact there was like a it was in where they were playing out was near like a war a battle that was going on um during some country that they were touring in and during the time something happened where everyone had to leave and rush out so there were just scattered tents everywhere there were tents tents people left all their belongings people had to rush out of this area quickly and the band was walking through all these tents and just like kind of like seeing everything that was left behind and they saw an airplane fly over and it had dropped supplies like hot dogs and like pots and pans and stuff to be able to cook like emergency food things to this area this population that really needed it and it dropped it right by where they were playing at so they were pulling out all these like pots and pans and shit and they just started playing on the pots and pans music and then next you know people a little bit <laughs> a few people that were hanging around hiding or you know that were like still around at the show or something when it was over maybe they came over and they started playing all these pots and pans he does a better job i recommend listening to him on joe rogan explain it but he was like holy shit like this is how a process comes together let's get in the fucking basement with our as friends as we're just going to create and have fun like how when we first started instead of being a national global thing where we can get studio time like that and trying to create a hit let's just create something that we're going to fucking love that gets lost with the mm. new stuff where it's like now everybody tries to be on number one hits or something i'm like hang on a second I'm not, I, I like it. The noises are nice to my ears. It makes me like want to dance and do this. But then a month later, nobody's talking about it. Old Town Road was an, a perfect example. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, I think I've said before, I think I've, uh, this kind of links in a little bit with, funnily enough, going back to my show, but going on about the um, before social media and pulling the plug and how life was so much better. But um, like the, another thing is, um, I think I said the the unholy trinity 
um, is uh, social media, the smartphone and reality TV. Smartphone, not so much. You can't be helped. It's not. It's the it's the the least of our worries. But the other one is uh, reality TV. Now, reality TV, all of a sudden, people like it because that's when their next door neighbour can end up on TV. Oh, they're one of us. They're one of us. I hear people say that. Oh, that's why I like them because they're one of us. I I, I don't want to see my next door neighbour that can barely sing on the TV. I want to see someone who's qualified to to entertain me. You didn't on like the TV. American Idol. Are you shitting me? No. No, nothing, no, no reality TV at all. And I tell you what, because it's now influenced younger people who have only ever known TV with reality TV to go, this is the norm. We go on TV, even though we might not be qualified to do it. We get, you know, we win. We're in, you know, we're in the spotlight. And then once the money men are done with us and they feel like the attention is starting to drop off, they discard us and say, well, that's normal because that, that's the world today. That's the world today. That's how it's meant to be. Well, no, no, no. How about how about we just go back to what you were saying? We we're saying, well, how about we we create celebrities? We create bands and musicians and artists and whatever that who actually stick around for more than five minutes and don't get dropped at the first sign of that. The, the record may not be doing as well as the last one because they tried something new. Heaven forbid. So you want to hear my theory on reality television? Go for it. I think you need it on the aspect of when you don't have conflict in your everyday life, you start to try and find conflict somewhere else. I remember I had a day where I had come home and nothing bad happened. And I was expecting like to come home to like, I don't know, like a chore I had to do or somebody yelling at somebody or something. And next thing I know, nothing was there. And I was like, wow, like this is weird. My day at school there was nothing that happened that was aggressive or got me a little bit like entertained so I turned on the tv and found Jersey Shore then I'm like wow I'm satisfied <laughs> okay. and that that sounds like a joke but it's being serious like it's the people like nowadays you hear people ta uh, yelling at someone or, or calling the cops on someone for not wearing a mask it's like you want to see it play out you like to be the little devil that's like, oh, what happens if this happens? What happens if they get in trouble? And then you're also egging it on, like, don't wear a mask. I want to see what happens. Don't wear it. It's this whole aspect of like, you're looking for that conflict. And now reality mm -hmm. television show, like The Bachelor, all these things that got you an escape and put you into this like dream persona. It was the same thing with American Idol. You wanted to see people succeed, but it's like NASCAR too. You also want to see them fucking crash. Like you don't yeah. want to see just a bunch of cars going around for 300 laps and then nothing happens. You want to see a fucking wreck and hope nobody gets hurt. You want to see someone go on American Idol that's a cocky douchebag and get made fun of on national television and get their hopes and dreams crushed. But you don't want to see someone that actually, you know, wants to be up there and really believes that you know into themselves you don't want to see that happen but you like to watch it you like to entertain the idea of it and that's what reality television shows did it just bred this whole generation to feel like they can be number one hit famous movie stars and all these things with media and it's like no no no, no. there are some people that are naturally gifted with a talent that like michael jordan for instance yeah you're not going to randomly be born and be as talented as Michael Jordan. That's a very rare, small percentage chance that you have that a natural God gifted ability. A lot of people like they think, Oh, I'll just become Michael Jordan. It's like, that's not how it works. You're not going to grow four feet overnight. You're not going to have amazing basketball skills. You're not going to have any of this, but that's the mindset is that you can do anything. And it's like, hang on a second. You should be doing what you want to do. But because that's what you're good at, what you want to do is naturally something that you're really good at, something that you have distinctly left behind that you kind of were shown a little bit in the beginning. Like my parents are on radio. Last thing I wanted to do was in radio. Now look what I'm doing, podcasting. I did it in my own way. You have to find that thing that you want to do and do it. But you can't just be like, I'm going to be a fucking model. It's like, start working out. Oh, I don't want to do that. Then you're not going to be a fucking model because they don't hire people that don't have a six pack for TV. It's just not appealing to people's eyes. Well, that's it. And that's, this is the problem. I think there's too many people who are now really uh, self-absorbed and believe that they can do it. 
because they've seen it so many times and they don't think a lot again along with uh, social media it's like it's just, it, i think it's a rise in narcissism um i, I again like you said that the 90s was such an easy time to live in and it was because you had you had narcissists but you but you know you called them on their bullshit you let them know in a nice way not you know you didn't just you know like you didn't give them hell all day long but you you, you if they were being a bit narcissistic you put them in their place they probably wouldn't listen to you because they're narcissists but at least you've you've you know, you called them out on their bullshit. Nowadays, it's rampant. And it's the norm, and it's it's accepted as well, which is I think is which is scary. It's the norm, and it's accepted, and no one wants to do anything about it because it is reality TV. I mean, I don't know what you, you've got. Uh, Jersey Shore, you said, you know, over there. I don't know how many other different um, shows like that you've got, but we've got something called. Uh, We've got something called The Only Way is Essex. And it is people covered in just the girls are covered in plastic and fake hair, fake tan, fake eyelashes. Wait, wait, and, wait, wait. And you these... mean like you mean like body modification plastic? Or are you talking about like they're legit like wrapped in plastic, like zip? -wrap? Oh no, I mean it's just too much, it's just it's too much makeup. I mean, like, you know, they have to put it on with a like they've taken a trowel from a building site and just like slapped. Like when you go to an old diner and you would see that waitress that had way too much makeup or it was like a mask, you could pull it off her face. Like, what do you that's want, it. doll face? You're like, holy shit, that's scary. But I'll take a cheese yeah, well, That's the norm now because of that program where they're all, they were all <coughs> looking like that. That is now the norm for a lot of young people in this country over here. And, and you know, they'll go on um, social media take a selfie, full face of makeup, um, and then underneath will say, oh, I feel so ugly today. And then underneath you'll, you'll have like, it'll have That's what we call fishing for attention, brother. That is, that is the thing is everybody wants to be like, look at me, look at me. Me, 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 me. And it's so weird because even if people say that's not what I'm about, it's like, how do I know? Because everyone's about that. It's like, you don't have a little bit, like I notice I have an ego issue. So when people give me compliments, I just dismiss them. Not like, oh, like you suck. No, it's more like, I'm good. Thanks for the compliment. But, you know, I, I, you have to keep the mentality that you're not as important as you think you are, I feel like. And it also yeah. works in the other way. I'm not telling some person that thinks to be, think to be worthless. No, but for some people, you need to get knocked off the high stool because I feel like for way Absolutely. too long, you've been on the high stool. And it's like, that's an issue is when you're gifted everything and you want everything. And when you want things, you shouldn't always get them. Like, I feel like we kind of maybe took a wrong turn at TiVo, like where you can skip through a commercial. That's bullshit. You should have to sit through and watch that shit. Not only yes. is it advertising for a product, but it's also the fact of like, you're wanting it now. And when you start doing shit like that, you're going to be like, I'll, I don't want to listen to that because I, I want this now. It's like, oh, I don't want to have to, you know, Spotify with the ads. They would pop in an ad yeah. after every couple of song skips or something. The next, you know, people just stopped using Spotify and wanted to go to a different app. It's like, oh, my God, like you have to do something. You can't just have everything you want. I get it. You're in the car. You want to listen to Old Town Road because you're going down a back road and you feel like this really resonates with you because of what you're doing. <laughs> but you got to hear the ad about whatever. It's Spotify Studio. You got to hear the ad about toilet paper. You got to. Yeah. And again, I don't know where we took that wrong turning. And the only thing I can think of is that the reason why I don't talk about the noughties is because I think that actually the whole thing actually started in the noughties. I think the, um, I think the smartphone, uh, reality TV and social media all just kind of like, all just kind of turned up roughly around the same time. And, um, and then there was a, uh, just a general dip in quality of, um, in my opinion of music and programming for a while um certainly in you know the music's still happening um but, it, but all of a sudden it's just like well oh shit what happened there who who suddenly decided that this is the way it was going to be like who made this decision who who has now influenced our young people today to being like this to being like well i deserve it uh you know aren't i beautiful people want to know about what i'm talking about 
and I shouldn't have to wait in the queue because I'm prettier than you. When did this happen? You know, when, when did like, when someone move out, oh no, no, I don't want your hand-me-downs. I want brand new stuff. When did that happen? Like, fuck man, I'm like, I'm 37. And I still need, I still need that hand every now and again. I'm like, I was like, you know, oh, um, whatever, I don't know, microwave broke, Take, front room table broke. I need a new one. I can't get one until another month or two. You know, um, uh, my mum came around the other day with a microwave that looked like it was, um, you know, you could launch it into space. It's the thing looks like a smart car. It's gigantic, but it will do until I can get another one. I, I honestly, I, I know so many young people. I, for a little while, I worked for a, um, uh, call it a charity. It's set up like a charity. It's for homeless teenagers in Southampton and, and uh, uh, Portsmouth, which is just down the road from us. And um, the amount of homeless kids who, in some instances, didn't have any family at all, who were just like turning their noses up at things. It's like, well, we'll give you a flat. So where is it? Oh, it's in this area. Well, that's nowhere near my friends. I don't want that. Okay. Well, how about these? You know, how about uh, you know, these? You know, this new cooker and microwave for the kitchen. It's like, is it white? No, it's black. Well, I don't want it then. It's like I, I don't know where this. It has come started from. with the motherfuckers that were picky at dinner when they would be like, "I don't want my peas to touch my mashed potatoes." It's like you yeah. son of a bitch. You're. I, there's some things where it's like, yes, they need to be changed, and then there's some things you're like throwing a rock at like a pond just to watch the splash it's like you're just wanting that 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 whatever resistance you're looking for that resistance you're looking for that tension you're looking for that struggle and you start creating it in your everyday life the issue is why people love the 90s in my opinion is the aspect of it's not just the way everything looked how stylish it was how it's kind of making a throwback in that way but i feel like it was a lot more simpler like I didn't have to worry about a bunch of shit. I could just watch like cartoons when I was a kid. I could play Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I have to worry about a bunch of things. If you try and sit down and watch television for a minute, you have your phone going off on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. all these things where people are like, I need to take a social media break. And it's like, yeah, because if you pay attention now, it feels like they're constantly being like tracked watch and i'm not talking about the government i'm talking about like just having a crippling device on you i mean i love technology on the aspect that lets me do this but at the same yeah. time like i left my phone the other day just to go to the grocery store i was gone 35 minutes and i left <laughs> it plugged into my wall because it was just charging so i was like all right well i'll just let it charge and i'll go to the store and come back and then check it then Dude, I had like five missed calls, eight text messages, four Twitter posts, two Instagram notifications. And Twitter always is like, I'm going to, you know, when someone comments on a status you're tagged in, I'm going to let everybody know. So then I have like a hundred different notifications from Twitter telling me somebody liked the st status I was commented on. And I was like, oh my God, I had to go through my settings and sit for an hour and shut all the notification stuff off just to isolate a little bit. I was like, because you're not it's not simple anymore it's not like you can't just watch tv now it's you got to watch tv you got to have music playing while you're watching tv it's like massive adhd for the whole society which at first was like i can get a lot of shit done now it's like i can't i can't get away you're locked in now to where now you're setting up things for yourself where your life is going to be a million times a minute even in the movie theaters it's not turn your cell phone off it's dim your brightness I'm like, what? what? Yeah, that's that hurts my brain. You can't. I just don't. Again, it's it's um, going back to your. You know, I, I don't want my peas touching my mashed potatoes. Like you can't. You, you can't. Oh, what is it? What are the? What are the? Uh, I don't. I don't do politics really. Uh, but it's more of a society thing now. The anti-maskers. They say, oh, my civil liberties. Yeah, my rights. What about my rights? It's a phone. You know, if if. If if it's that important, you know that you know it will still be there in like an hour and a half to two and a half hours later. Like, don't worry about it. If you're that afraid of missing out on things, don't go somewhere where you need to turn your phone off. Then, what are you going to do if you're having surgery? You, it's not like you can have your, your your PA on your Twitter, you know, answering questions when you're under the knife. Just 
go without it. Like, people are so scared. And I think that a lot of it is, you know, you, you, I read a lot, um, I was reading a lot of these studies about social media and uh, phone usage and everything. You get this thing like FOMO, so fear of missing out, and how it's crippling people's lives. People won't go to bed. People won't sleep. And they're taking uh, more and more caffeine and everything. And then, you know, when the caffeine is not working, they'll like uh, Adderall or whatever. And they, they won't go to sleep. They're living on minimal sleep because they think they might miss out on something. I'm, I, I, just, I'm, I'm really, I don't understand. I'm, it's going to keep getting worse. I don't see a fix with just how fast we're climbing um, as a society, technology wise, we're just going. That's like our main focus, which I understand uh, people's wanting like, but technology, I love it and I hate it. I think I just mostly don't like it on the aspect of it seems like every problem it's created, well, every problem that's out there, people are like, well, we wouldn't be able to do this. It's like, yeah, but every problem that we're facing right now is something technology created. Oh yeah, but technology fixed it. It's like, so it fixed the problem it initially created. Like it's, it, the issue is we're so influenced and we have so much of a reach to find out any information we want at any time, at any minute we want to find it. And then, like you said, fear of missing out. Once you feel like, you know, you fall asleep, you wake up, you miss like 30 million things and you're freaking out trying to spend half the day recovering from what you missed. All these posts, make sure you like everything. It just gets so weird because it's like false attention. It's like when you get 30 million likes on your post or something, it makes you feel good. If you have followers, it makes you feel good. But none of them, you don't really know their names. You don't really talk to them on a daily basis. You don't have the real connection, but it gives you the same dopamine hit. It's just weird because they created a light phone, which is supposed to be like you have, uh, what is it? You can call people, you can text people, but there's like no internet on the phone. But then they were like, all right, we'll let you listen to like podcasts. And it's like, there you, you, you got to stop there. Cut it off before podcasts. I would, yeah, I, that hurts us with listeners, but it hurts people in general when all they want to do is like, back in the day, they had the Amigo. You had three calls on there you could call your mom your dad and then some other person a friend if you wanted to put them on there but that was it there was no internet there was no instagram there was no twitter you had to go home on your computer to use facebook you know even back in the day with cd players you had one fucking cd that means you were listening to that cd that means yeah. if you wanted <laughs> one song off that cd you'd have to keep replaying it over and over again now you have a whole damn arsenal on your phone where you can listen to anything at any time you want and it's like this whole thing of instead of saying i have two apples but you can only have one now it's like i have a bunch of apples and i'll let you pick once you start doing that then everyone's like wait a minute so i can't have all the apples well no we have to save some for the rest no i want all the apples all right if you want all the apples and then you give them the basket it's like hold on we're, we got to have some little bit of limitations here on the aspect of you can't get everything you want anytime you want it. You have to wait for some shit like Christmas. Let me open up a present early. Don't. Ooh. No, no, you got to wait. But I can't no. wait. No, I, I got to have it now. But you know why that is? Because you, you, um, I mean, my parents, I, I didn't grow up with much money. Um, that's fine. Um, you know, there were some instances when I was a kid where I didn't get what I wanted. I bitched about it. I laugh about it now, um, but I didn't get it. And, and that, that was it. That's fine. But then you get the parents that don't do that and spoil the kids. But even more dangerous than that. See, back in the day, it was kids um, with parents who were doing anything for them. That was the danger. Now it's corporations, it's companies, because they know that those kind of people who want more, 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 me, 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 now, 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 all the time, who expects more all the time, you know, and aren't happy with the status quo and thinking like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? What, you know, why, why do I have to have headphones in to be able to listen to music? Why isn't it in my brain already? You know, it's, they, the corporations know that there's people out there. And so what do they do? It's like, well, we've got, a, we've got a, an ever growing, ever growing unsatisfied market of young people with money who will just, who, you know, because of the fear of missing out, they will queue up outside, they will queue up outside of shops and they will, you know, for, for hours and hours, like for a day, just to get this new technology. So it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter. I, I, we've, we've gone too far and there's no turning back. I, I don't see a way back. I could tell you the prediction for the future. Said. There's a last few things left that where you have to wait in a fucking line. That is classic where you have to wait an hour or something. That was mm. post office. You always got to wait in a line at a post office unless you're like 10 minutes early or something or a half hour early. You're always waiting in line there. It kind of puts a little bit of patience like, oh, my God, I really want to send this package out because I got this to do. But you have to sit there and wait until it's your turn. Water parks, and don't even talk about that now because that's gone with the pandemic. That's never happening again. Yeah. Bunch of people <laughs> pissing in water and fluids going in your mouth. No, that's not <laughs> happening. Um, but that was a thing you had to wait in line for too, and people didn't complain about it. And then restaurants. But then Uber came in. Then all these DoorDash oh. and all these things came in. And now people don't even want to go out into the line anymore. They'd rather just get the food delivered to them and stay home while they can play Netflix and do all these other things. I noticed yeah. it when – instead of going to the gym, I got in like a cycle for my room. I was playing video games and it was flying by with cycle for like six hours. <laughs> like it was nothing. Then I went to the gym and I tried cycling and an hour goes by so slow. It's like, Oh my God, I could be doing this way better at home and actually getting stuff done. It's like, there you go. It's the whole idea of you're not putting a hundred percent into the craft anymore. You're doing a billion other things. So your time and your, I guess, percentages are all spread out like i'm going to put 15 percent into instagram today i'm going to put 10 percent while i'm watching netflix i'm going to put five percent into cooking i'm going to do this 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 then other areas in your life start nagging and you got to catch up on them somehow but you still need to be doing something else because we can't just do one thing anymore no no at all um i i would be quite happy to just if if i could come off of instagram um, right now, I would, but I don't have a, my laptop died a little while ago. So, and you can't, you can't delete your profile on a phone. Um, I would do the same. I mean, I'm logged out of my Facebook. I had Facebook when it first came out, and it's still there, knocking around somewhere. If I could get rid of Twitter, I'm kind of using Twitter to market the show to, and uh, to keep in touch with people. That's how I got in, in touch with yourself. But if I could get rid of everything. I 100% believe that my life would be better. It would be, without any social media, my life 100% would be a million miles better because I would be able to do what you said. I would be able to give 100% focus. I, I used to be an avid, real avid um, collector of DVDs. I had an insane collection. Um, and, and I loved it. I spent so much money on it. It was kind of stupid, but it was it was something that I, I was achieving. And when I watched the film, it, it just it filled me with so much joy. And I have to say, since I've started using Twitter to um, get people to listen to the pod, which is something I've always wanted to do, is you know, is like radio or whatever or podcasting. I, I, but now I'm on Twitter. I can't. I can't watch TV with the same or, or a film with, a, with, a, with the same satisfaction that I used to. I can't cook. I used to really enjoy cooking. I have to say it's tainted because I think, right, I'll just look at this recipe. I'll screenshot it. Um, but then I need to go and check something else quickly because I think that guy's got back to me about, you know, collaboration or whatever. It's I, I, I've fallen into the trap. I'm Mr. I hate social media. And even I've fallen into the trap of not being able to enjoy anything like properly anymore. Um, and like, uh, and and I'll finish this bit off with the in the same way I did the last bit. We turned a corner. I don't see a way back. Like, is there is there a way back? I think a lot of people, them, um, like it's becoming pretty common now with social media breaks. I've heard a lot of friends go on it. I usually do it like after a recording day, like today. I'll probably just really be unresponsive on my phone because I need to set it down. It's really hard because you get so hooked into it that it's like a nagging little chain on you. But even with movies, like I went to my buddy's house, he's playing a game. I'm sitting in a chair, like I'm supposed to be watching him play and talking to him. And I'm at a friend's house. I'm on my phone the whole time. I and mean, we didn't really even talk. We're just kind of like just mindlessly going. And then like I, he pulled out some uh, screwball whiskey, which I said, hey, I don't drink, but that is something I'll drink. 
Uh, and I, I was just drinking it. And next thing I know, I was getting kind of like hammered to the point where I stopped. I couldn't really text that well. So I just got off my phone and I was having a great fucking time. We were playing this game and he has it on like a master difficulty. I've never played it before. So I grabbed the controller thinking like, I'll, I'll beat. it's a game. I could beat it. I died like 50 times on the easiest level. And he was like, dude, you're jumping in a game where they're not teaching you how to play. You don't know what buttons to hit. It's not even the same console you play. I'm like, yeah, but like, this is the fun. I'm here and I'm, I'm like in it right now. Like we're like, we're, we're talking, we're laughing, yes. we're joking around. It's like playing a board game. Try cracking out a board game now. It's not as hard as you would think. I try and set it out with my buddy. I'm like, hey man, want to play Monopoly? He's like, that's boring shit. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's play, let's play. And we start getting into it. Next thing you know, we're on our eighth game. It's like been 10 hours already. We're just sitting there shooting the <laughs> shit. Like, I, I, I want to buy Boulevard. He goes, you're not buying that property because I own the other one. I'm like, I'm buying the property. He goes, dude, don't you fucking. It's like playing chess. There's that connection mm. where it's like, damn, you really screwed me over when you took my knight or something. It's that whole thing. There's an actual communication thing in there. But when you start playing video games and all these other things, it gets lost because your mind wants to wander off into something else. But when you're being forced to sit down and play with someone, you end up realizing like why D&D is so important for a lot of people. It's that connection back into each other again. Like, holy shit, we're, we can still have fun together because sometimes you don't see people for months and then you message them and it feels like the connection's kind of lost. It's hard to find one where you can not talk to someone for eight months or a year and then message them. And it was like nothing ever like you, you didn't miss out on any time. And that's just because we're being so influenced with everything nowadays, where if you're not doing a podcast at one, you're not uploading content at two, you're not being a part of a podcast at three, you're not watching a movie at four, you're not doing all these things that you need to do every minute of the day, you feel like you're doing nothing. And that is the problem. Sometimes you need to do nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think as kids, that's a little bit hard to understand. Um, I know it's certainly hard for me to understand. Um, that's a million things running around inside my head when I was a kid, though. Just, just the kind of brain that I can't switch off. and I'm still the same now, but it's now I'm older. I, I really can appreciate like, just how much time and how it's not even the time, but the opportunity I have now. To, to do nothing, to, to chill out. And um, I mean, I, I found out something a couple of years ago. I always knew there was going off on a slightly different tangent now, or completely one real. Um, but I, a couple of years ago, um, even though I knew my whole life, there was something not quite right about me. Um, I found out by a couple of doctors is that like, we're pretty sure you've got autism. And I was like, well, let's have a look at the, the, the symptoms. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got it as well, you know, um, because I need to come home. And when I, once I come home, demask, there's my normal person mask, I put it on the table, and then I can just let all my crazy out and just have, 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 have. And, and that's what I need to do. And, and I can appreciate how much time um, I had back then to just, you know, uh, uh, to, what was it when you get on a, you come off a, off a submarine? Is it depressurize? And um, you know, I needed that. Oh, and I, I managed to get that when I was at school, and you know, when, when you know, back in the nineties. I don't get that now because everything is so go 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 all the you don't, time. You don't have time to decompress from anything anymore. Nobody decompress, does. That's it. Yeah. I t I tell people that we've been people are worried about masks. I'm like, you've been wearing a mask most of your whole entire life with the aspect of nobody ever wants to be themselves in public anymore. Like it's a big thing of pride I take in is I'm the same person on air as I am off air. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I can't be anybody else. I couldn't do so many episodes or as many episodes as I have and be somebody else, be a character. Like, cause I fucking, I, it's why do that in your everyday life? You, it's like, tr here's a game you can play. Try going in a store, having an accent and then keeping that accent. It's fucking impossible. When someone hits you with a question you're not expecting, you're like, oh, it's actually, the, it's not going to be $5. You already have the five bill handed out to them. And a, here's, here's a $5 bill. And then you, you, they go and grab it and they go, it's actually $6.75. You're like, $6.75? Like, what happened to your accent? It's like, what? What accent? And it's like, yes, your mind is constantly already focused on what you need to do to display an image for people to look at. That needs to go away. That You need to be yourself. 
it's the same thing when people get in relationships and after six months they move in together and they realize the person that they've been dating this whole time is not as clean as they thought, not as nice as they thought. It's like you're playing an act. Drop the act. Be yourself. We're going to be friends or not. That's how it's going to go. But I don't fake yeah. like, oh, I love going to Kmart. I fucking hate going to Kmart. Don't I? You you gotta you gotta be you, or you're never gonna truly want to be yourself ever. And then that's the issue is we used to be safe when we got into our homes. We used to be like, I can all right, relieve the stress of the day. I could be naked. Now it's like you're confined to I can only be naked in my room. Now it's like everyone's afraid to be naked on the aspect of you don't <laughs> want anything or anybody to see you not at your prime or not at your best. And it's like, oh, this Absolutely. is gonna create such issues in the world. I um I remember thinking at the time that was like oh I wish I was a bit taller or uh, you know I wish I was um you know a bit funnier a bit faster a bit better at football or I wish I was this I wish I was that but it wasn't a constant thought in the back of my head always like you know bang 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 it was like a woodpecker on my head all always going it was just kind of one of those things you I think all kids generally kind of think like oh I wish I was a bit like that oh I wish I was a bit like this but I I think and I didn't realize how grounded and how set i was until i talked to some of these other kids that i see and uh, you know, my daughter she'll have her friends around and i see them and i'm like wow like you're you, you like you really don't some of them don't want to be themselves anymore like it's always been a thing there's always been celebrity worship and everything for, for you know, however long um but again it's it's becoming more and more prevalent you can you can see it more and more I'm, I'm happy i've got that grounding from my youth where i'm like i am shorter than i want to be i'm not particularly talented at anything or anything um i'm like heavy set naturally just an overweight guy <laughs> that's fine that's fine you know I've got, you. Um, I've got a bum knee and um, i'm not that bright but you know what i'm awesome i'm happy i'm cool and it's it, i think some of that is age like I've, I've aged to a bit where I'm like, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. also a point of not giving a fuck. I feel like a lot of people need to stop giving a fuck. You know what I mean? Like society, you want, you, we don't have that anymore. You should want to be yourself, but society is telling you everything you need to be is something else. And that's the issue is that you shouldn't be taking views from someone you don't fucking know, some nameless face with a duck as their profile picture on Twitter or Instagram. Doesn't make any sense, yeah. but that point is so valid to you because then you start caring about the whole world of what everybody thinks. Everyone cares a lot about what people think. Even if you say you don't, you care about somebody thinking that you're something. The issue is social media has opened up that world to everyone across the globe that can say shit to you without ever meeting you. And that's the issue. Yes, yeah, keyboard warriors. Well, like um, uh, I was having a, a chat before we had our, our, our latest lockdown. I was having a chat with a few friends I, I knew from school. And, um, and a lot of them just couldn't wrap their head around like some of the shit that we're dealing with nowadays. And I said, you know, I, I, I said the same thing we we're saying. I said, it's social media. And they weren't too convinced. And I said, well, I think there's one of these guys, Wayne, who he and I are just polar opposites. And um, I'm known for making perhaps sometimes, you know, rash statements, or at least I always used to. Um, and he would say something that was a bit a bit far on the right wing. And I'd turn around and be like, no, 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 no. Not bad, but just a little bit too far. And I'd turn around and what we would do, and I used the phrase, if you were sat around in a group, you would call out each other's bullshit. And that's, that's something that doesn't happen because we're all worried about our image. We can't be seen. Uh, we can't be seen to be telling someone that they can't do something. Um, also, we can't be seen to be wrong anymore. Um, whereas back in the day, it was something that was incredibly important. It was, in, it was incredibly important to be seen um, when you're wrong, to be able to hold your hand up and say, yeah, you know what? You're right. I fucked up there. You're absolutely right. I've made a mistake. Well done on calling me out. But here's my counter argument as well. You know, it's, it, that, that does not happen. No one calls out anyone's bullshit, I don't think. Unless, I still unless do. It's unless it's someone from the other side of the world on a keyboard going, I think this about you, asshole. 
and that's not healthy. I get in trouble by people that I go out with, like go to like the store with my buddies, whatever. I will call people out on their bullshit. If a person is freaking out that, that going like, like being fast paced, if someone's taking like really long in a line at a store, I'd be like, Hey bro, like, what are you rushing to? Like, you don't need to abuse this person in front of you. Like, and like, I, and even in movie theaters, if I hear someone's cell phone go off, I'm like, dude, take it the fuck outside. And then like, yeah, look at, yeah. who, who said that? And my buddy's like, dude, you can't say that. I'm like, call people out on their shit. If you're talking yeah. on a cell phone in the middle of the store, I'll say, why don't you go outside? I do it all the time at work. I work at a gym. Some dudes just having a full on conversation, not weightlifting, just having a conversation inside the gym. I'm like, hey, man, why don't you take it outside? The guy looks yeah. at me like, what did you just say to me? I'm like, take it outside, dude. I, nobody else wants to hear your conversation about the quiches in the oven 45 minutes or some shit. Take it outside. I don't, nobody wants to hear that. It's an issue where like, I'm starting to correct people on it. If a phone's going off in a store and a person just lets it ring. If uh, a person's playing their video games in a store, person's texting and not moving up in line. I'm like, hey, line's moving. I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's like, you gotta no, know like when to back away from the technology a bit and pay attention because you're in the real fucking world. If you drive and you're texting, you have the opportunity and the chance that you might accidentally hurt someone and you need to yes. pay attention for that. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a supermarket um, just around the corner from me, but there's two, uh, there's three shops along uh, alongside of it and the, uh, Walk, coming back from the supermarket, big heavy bags. It's only a short walk, so I'm there walking up to mine. But every single time, you can guarantee coming out of the last shop in the row is someone with their head in their phone, texting and shuffling out of the exit as Punch I'm him walking face. up. Punch him in the face. <laughs> it's usually it's usually a pregnant mum with a screaming kid. Um, <laughs> does My it. offer still stands. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Someone else, someone else come here and punch her in the face. But it's, it's really annoying. It's just the why. Why do you think that's acceptable? Who has told you that shuffling around with your head in your phone while other people are trying to walk past you? Who has told you that's acceptable? At what point in like history did the parents, friends, advertisers, anything, you know, people on TV or in film, who... Who said it's okay to stick your head in your phone to not say, please, thank you, excuse me, sorry? Who said that? Because that's happened. And now I sound like some cranky old man out of a meme or something. But that's exactly, you know, that's what, I've, that's what I'm turning into because people are being assholes because they're not being called out. Like you said, they're not being called out in their bullshit. Get your head out your phone. Stop talking about what happened last night. You're here to do a job. Get in with it. I couldn't agree with you more, man. You don't want to get nostalgia off your phone. It's it's a thing. No. That's, it's probably going to end up happening. But I mean, if people are listening are like, well, these guys just they just they're geezers. They just hate the new world. It's like <laughs> I, think, I just hate that the connection has gotten lost. But as much as we can shit on technology, it has given us an avenue for me being able to meet you and have this amazing conversation with you. Um, Indeed. Because it's, it's what should be used for, but we're not using it for that. And it gives people the opportunity to hear you, hear your thoughts, and hear what you love to do. And I want to give you here a second, dude. Be, promote your stuff, man. Promote where people can find the show. Let people know like what platforms it's on, everything, man. Because it, it's, it's a good show. I'm, I've listened to a few episodes, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. Ah, oh, thank you. It's, um, it's a bit of a nippy one. We're having a... We're, trying to like each show we go past we're like wow we had tech issues there or like oh we're a bit slow there and like, every single show i'm thinking oh yeah God, hang on so we'll get to like episode 30 and we'll be like fucking incredible but um uh, it's the insanely dangerous retro pod show um it's oh, i think it's a very, i can't remember everywhere but it's like a uh, pocket cast spotify apple breaker um if you we're on twitter as well so that's t-i-d-r podcast uh no pod show even um we've got a link tree there go on that there you go there's tech that i'm not shitting on link tree great idea yeah love it uh, <laughs> but yeah no it's not all tech um it's not all hate you know it's um there's different subjects it's all tv programs um it's nostalgia it's sometimes sometimes it's a, a moan sometimes it's me and my co-host dangerous 
uh, just just um, having perhaps a little bit too much to drink and and saying about how much uh, how much we love you know how much we love the past and uh, sometimes we can drag it into the present kicking and screaming and sometimes we leave it where it needs to be take me back to the era of 3am sham wow commercials <laughs>